If someone was to tell you that astrophotography and time travel are actually quite similar, would you believe them? <laughs> Light that's emitted from the deep space objects that I capture takes thousands and in some cases millions of light years to reach Earth. Let's take the Butterfly Nebula in Cygnus as an example. So it's 5,000 light years away from Earth, meaning light has taken the Butterfly Nebula 5,000 light years to reach us. So we're seeing IC1318 5,000 light years in the past. In this video I'm going to take you on a complete astro adventure and show you just what the Butterfly Nebula looked like 5,000 years ago. Let's get going. What you saw there was by no means my final balance and a tip that I'd like to give to beginners out there is definitely do a rough balance before your final one. This is just to ensure that your telescope is in roughly the right place before you attach everything else that you need for the imaging session. However, to be absolutely sure that your telescope is going to be able to form at 100% of its ability when it's in the section of sky that you're going to be taking photos in, you're going to want to attach all the cables retract the dew shield and take off all caps that need to be taken off. Tonight, the Cygnus region is going to be directly overhead, which makes it exceptionally easy to image as it's going to be up for the majority of the night. I have an EQ6R Pro Go 2 mount, which means that if I align it with Polaris correctly, it will slow to any object in the night sky that I need it to at that time. However, what if you don't have a Go 2 mount? I'm talking about if you just want to look at the night sky for fun and learn your way around it, if you're working with a camera and a tripod, or if you're working with a Skywatcher Star Adventurer, which is a really, really good option for beginners in the hobby. It's basically a mini version of a mount like mine and it doesn't go to the objects for you, you have to find them manually, but it does track them once you're there to keep your stars round. So in order to find the objects in the night sky, I'm recommending an app called Skyview. I use it to plan my imaging sessions and the way it works is it uses your camera on your phone to show you your surroundings and where the stars are relevant to where you are at that moment in time. So say I want to image Cassiopeia, but I'm not sure if it's going to clear a tree in time for me to image it and the sun rising, I can use Skyview to direct me to Cassiopeia and show me whether it's going to clear that tree because it's showing me everything around me in the area. As I say, there are many different alternatives, but hopefully that'll give you a kickstart to finding your way to deep sky objects. We are getting very, very close to polar alignment now. But I just thought I'd take a quick opportunity to mention the setup that we're going to be using tonight in the garden. So I have the Esprit 120 triplet apochromatic refractor riding on the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. We've got an 840mm focal length on the Esprit 120 and an F ratio of F7. I obviously have the incredible QHY 260M monochrome camera on the back of the telescope tonight which QHY has sent me for a review and I'm going to be using that in hydrogen alpha to capture the butterfly nebula. sub of the butterfly nebula is about to come through any second <laughs> this is why i do it this this is why i do what i do <laughs> and i wouldn't be able to do what i do without you guys thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for 12,000 subscribers it's crazy to think where I was just a couple of years ago in comparison to where I am now and it's down to each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me on my journey. I love following you all and seeing your latest work. It's so, so inspiring to see a lovely community come together. Clear skies everyone, this is for you.